Thank you, Lenny Brenner. Uh, now Chris Hutchinson, a student at Central Connecticut State University, an illustrator of a new book on Robin Hood, and he's going to be speaking about that in West Haven Saturday, December 20th at 2 o'clock. And he was the Socialist Action Candidate in the 1st District for Congress several years ago. Chris Hutchinson. Thank you, Stan. Um, so I'm also going to start out by talking about the environment. <clears throat> Stan, I think, gave a good intro. Uh, to what I'm going to say. I'm going to be uh, getting to a couple of specific details as to why I think that it's been left off of the uh, debates and there's been silence about it in, in the debates. And then I'm going to um, uh, put forward, you know, why I feel that we should be voting socialist in the upcoming election and then what we need to do beyond that. Um, so the first three, the, the reasons are, the three of the reasons are, three of the points I want to make. Uh, one cannot truly address climate change without addressing the petrol guzzling U.S. war machine or U.S. imperialism. Uh, two, the politicians are bought and paid for by Wall Street, which includes the, the oil industries uh, who have a vested interest in maintaining the status quo. And three, capitalism really has no solution to the climate crisis um, uh, that is in motion. And, and really only workers hold that solution. And I'll end by saying well, what we can do. So to start, uh, when the U.S. government talks about the war on terror, the discussion never focuses on the U.S. military's global campaign of eco-terror. The U.S. Department of Defense is the largest polluter in the world, producing more hazardous waste than the five largest U.S. chemical companies combined. Pesticides, defoliants like Agent Orange, solvent, uh, solvents, mm -hmm. petroleum, lead, mercury, and depleted uranium are among the uh, many deadly substances used by the military. And with the depleted uranium that's being housed in parts of Massachusetts, and you can see the areas around it, the, the stuff is leaking out and it's poisoning the, the areas around the, the it's really awful stuff. Um, so yes, recycling programs are fantastic, but regarding climate change, the reality is no matter how many light bulbs you change, or if you drive a hybrid or drop the temperature on your thermostat, there is no addressing the crisis without confronting the bloody wheels of the US war machine. Um, the effects of U.S. foreign policy are not felt solely in the drone bombings, NATO bombings, wars in Iraq and Afghanistan and so on, but also in the drought-ridden fields of the global south where climate change is forcing millions to go hungry. And the U.S. military is now the driving force in that process. The effects are <coughs> noticeable, uh, and, and now the hope, as Stan said, that the effects are noticeable in the U.S. American workers and students, I think, are beginning to understand just how great a uh, threat uh, global warming is to our existence. Um, and there's a great article on Counterpunch, uh, which I'm going to talk about in a second. Uh, <coughs> second, war is inherent uh, part of the capitalist system. Uh, war will continue because the U.S. ruling class the 1% that seeks to maintain the capitalist system controls both Obama and Romney and their parties. One solution to war that was discussed uh, quite a bit during the debates, because they're always trying to say, like, we want peace, we want peace, how can we do it, is the search for energy independence. The thought is that energy independence, uh, meaning more drilling in deep water for oil, increased fracking, nuclear, um, nuclear energy pipelines from Canada, and wind and solar, which is given a, a brief mention, um, would reduce the need for U.S. military to be involved in foreign wars, and it would also create jobs at home. Both of these claims are false. Capitalists are competing across the globe for resources, and there is no way in hell that the U.S. capitalist uh, class would let China, Russia, or any number of international capitalists control the flow of oil and natural gas in the Middle East and Africa. This is the very reason the U.S. government is in <laughs> Afghanistan now, uh, and drone bombing tribal regions of Pakistan. It is not to fight terrorism, it is for the control over the direction of which way the oil flows through pipelines. <laughs> Journalist uh, Pepe Escobar uh, outlined uh, this whole thing in a series of articles, one in particular called Welcome to Pipeline on the Stand. So <clears throat> what about domestic, these domestic forms of energy? Nuclear energy is clearly a danger to humanity as we've not only witnessed in Fukushima and Japan, uh, but there have also been countless radiation leaks, detonations of nuclear bombs, and so on right here on our soil. And I, I think the recent storm just shows how shaky that infrastructure is. Um, 
And they've also in the past had crazy ideas using nuclear energy. I was, I was reading some stuff on Panama. They wanted to use nuclear bombs to excavate to make the Panama Canal. They have ideas of, you know, they're insane. They have ideas of using nuclear bombs to create these big gla uh, gas, natural gas reservoirs out uh, in the Midwest and, and out west in the deserts. You know, we'll have radioactive gas and all, you know, they're just insane. And the reason they don't do it is not because it's radioactive, but because it's not cost effective. <laughs> Hydro, uh, hydraulic fracking uh, to extract natural gas is polluting water in devastating areas in Pennsylvania. And a friend of mine who lives in the area said that high schools are starting to sell the land uh, on which the school is to these uh, energy companies. Um, and they're, they're putting wells and they're fracking right on the school properties, um, polluting the water, making it dangerous for the students at school in an unhealthy environment. Um, and, and they're doing this to survive the economic crisis which was started by Wall Street in the first place. Thank you. After the BP tragedy, uh, Deepwater Horizon in the Gulf of Mexico, drilling for oil seems like an insane option as well. We have, uh, both Obama and Romney uh, are tripping over themselves to woo the oil industry. Um, the reality is that not only are the aforementioned energy strategies a disaster for the environment, but they also create very little in the way of jobs and do not reduce the energy cost. If they did, we would see more glowing reports from the Labor Bureau and we would certainly see cheaper prices at the pump. And anyways, most of the oil and natural gas that's extracted in the US is exported, so it's not like it's even being used by people in this country anyways. And the labor's probably gonna come from Mexico, or so it's not like Americans are gonna get jobs. Um, all sorts of questions are, are raised. Uh, we are headed down a dangerous path that if not reversed will, uh, will spell catastrophe for humans. The ruling class is incapable of not only stopping the eco-crisis, but also preparing the infrastructure for what now seems to be the norm, larger and more devastating storms. Um, Counterpunch is running an article that says New the New York City government was warned two years ago that the city would not stand a storm the, uh, the size of Sandy uh, and, and uh, would, not uh, stand a, uh, would not stand a storm the size of Sandy's magnitude. They had two years warning. They even went through uh, Irene uh, and were still incapable of spending the 10 to $20 billion to update the infrastructure. Now it's gonna cost them untold billions. Uh, it is the capitalist uh, quest to expand across the globe, looking to dominate natural resources and open new markets. It is the anarchy of the capitalist modes of production and their wars that drives humanity to the brink of disaster. Capitalism has no solution for humanity. And the politicians that do the bidding of the ruling class are like dogs tied to a tree, running in every which direction, but still tied to the same tree of capitalism. And I'll, three seconds. All right, so I'm gonna wrap up. Um, when, I, uh, when I ran, um, people often asked if uh, I would run as a Green Party member, and I said no. With all due respect, I work with a lot of great people in the Green Party, but the party itself is a mixed class party, a uh, multi-class party that cannot provide for the workers in this country. Uh, workers need their, their own party. And so uh, we, in my party, Socialist Action, while we're not running anyone this year, we're calling for people to vote for whatever socialist candidate is on the ballot or running as a writing candidate in their state. In particular, we endorse the following candidates for president. Peter Lindsay for the Party of Socialism and Liberation, James Harris of the Socialist Workers Party, uh, Stephen Durham of the Freedom Socialist Party, and Stuart Alexander of the Socialist Party. While we have differences with each of these organizations on a number of political questions, we are giving them our critical support because we feel their campaigns represent a step towards working class political independence. Campaigns such as these can serve as a placeholder for what our class ultimately needs, a mass labor party based on the unions. But whoever you vote for the, uh, in the next week, democracy does not end in the voting booth. It is important for each of us to get involved in, in our unions, our, the anti-war movement, immigrant rights movement, students or uh, other mass movements that can truly bring change. Just like what the Walmart workers are doing across the country, just like what the SEIU workers are doing in, in Connecticut here and the Chicago teachers mm -hmm. uh, last month. Um, and can I just wrap up the one, like two sentences? Uh, a recent statement on the upcoming elections from the United National Anti-War Coalition, I think, sums it up best. Regardless of who emerges victorious on November 6th, the need for a truly progressive mass movement must continue. Popular demand for change is now, as always, the only path to greater justice at home and abroad.